Hey, guess what? Physical game sales are down. They're, they're, they're down. They're down really far, actually. This is, uh, this is coming from Push Square, pushsquare.com. Physical games represented just 4% of sales for PlayStation last quarter. 4%. 4%. So what the heck, guys? I thought it was more than that. We're going to talk about this. This is Neon. This is Clownfish Gaming. This is Gaming News. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already. We do talk about the video game industry and gaming news that interests us as well as gameplay videos. And uh, I knew that, that physical media sales were down, but this is crazy. Last quarter, PlayStation, Sony said that Physical game sales only represented 4%. 4%! Uh, the only category down year-on-year. Year. Yeah, Sony's financials for Q2 2023 are here, and the report illuminates that physical games are a drop in the bucket for PlayStation these days. Uh, Sony Interactive Entertainment had a record-breaking second quarter in terms of revenue. Yeah, now that people can actually get a PS5, you know, um, of that total, uh, that's like, what, nine point. 54 billion yen. I don't know what that is in US dollars. Of that total, physical games account for about 35.5 billion yen. Again, I don't know what that is in US dollars, which comes out to roughly 4%. 4%. For comparison's sake, digital sales of full games on PS Store represents 21% of total revenue. This actually isn't an unusually low stat. It isn't. Physical games have been a small percentage of PlayStation's revenue stream for a good while now. What's interesting about it is that in this record-breaking Q2, physical games are the only sales category that decreased year on year. By that same measure, all other areas saw significant growth. Zooming in on PlayStation's physical digital sales split, which looks at the units sold rather than cash, just over two thirds of software sales were digital. This is a slight increase year on year, but down. Uh, compared to Q1 2023. There's still a market for physical games, albeit a small one. Hmm. The main source of sales has shifted. If that wasn't already clear, do you prefer buying your games on disc or you, do you prefer buying them digitally? I, I actually buy most of my games digitally now. I do, and it's probably not very smart. I'm going to be honest, it really is not smart because we've seen a lot of things get zapped. Uh, movies and uh, you know comic books and, and a lot of digital media gets gets zapped i mean if someday you buy a game and sony decides they don't want to host it anymore and uh, then you buy another playstation like you can't re-download it I, i've run into this with ios you know i've had apps for years i mean we're talking like going back to like 2010 2011 and then they just stop updating it or i can't download the old version of it because it doesn't work with the uh the OS anymore, but uh, yeah, I don't know, guys. Um, I think this is the way things are going. I think that um, I wouldn't be surprised if we talked about the Nintendo Switch 2. It wouldn't surprise me if the Nintendo Switch 2 had a legacy cartridge or card slot, but predominantly that those games were going to be sold digitally. And in fact, the version of the PS5 I have is the digital version. I don't even have a disc drive on mine uh, because I, I don't buy the discs. Like, I don't know what I'm going to do with the discs. But um, there was an article on Game Rant uh, earlier this year, January. Physical game sales are down substantially, according to a new report. We're going to talk about that, and then we're going to talk about you know how uh, maybe physical sales can be salvaged, that they need to do more primo versions of game releases, which a lot of companies like Limited Run Games do. But of course, Limited Run Games has come under fire because they fired their community manager uh, for having uh, tweets that literally like one person didn't like. And I used to buy these kinds of collections. I have a lot of physical releases from Limited Run Games and uh, other game companies. And, uh, you know, they're nice to have, but the reality is, is I don't actually play them. I sit them on a shelf. I look through the books and stuff like once and I sit on a shelf and it looks nice on my shelf, but I go back when I want to actually play the game. I usually play the digital version of it. So, I mean, this is a cool idea and everything, uh, but I just don't know if a lot of people are going to do this. Um, anyway, this is an article from earlier this year. Sales of physical copies of video games have dropped quite a bit, according to a new report on the health of the video game industry in the UK. In the UK, the ease of access to digital games 
has proved that the convenience of being able to download the game directly onto a console or PC from home is too alluring. Seems the age old digital versus physical debate is being sold by people who would rather buy games from the comfort of their own homes. Yeah, RIP GameStop. You know, I mean, this is why GameStops are failing because nobody needs to buy physical copies of games anymore. Again, it's probably smart to do that because at least you've got that unaltered version of a game for posterity. But most people, they're like, yeah, I just want to play the new game like when it comes out. And you don't run out of copies either. Yeah, back in the day, like when I was a kid, Mario 3, when it came out, it took me like two months to find a copy of Mario 3 in the wild, in the store, because it sold out immediately. And now you just download it. You know, Mario Wonders out. Okay, cool, I'm gonna download it. I don't know what's up with this guy in the roller skates in this ad, so. Guys, I, I, I gotta run the ads on this site. They won't let me not run ads on this site. Uh, physical sales have been on a steady decline over the past decade, with the rise of digital storefronts, most prominently in Steam. Uh, the old brick and mortar retail model has struggled to keep pace. Yeah, basically, retro games sell to collectors and that's that's pretty much it. Now that Microsoft, Nintendo, and Sony offer their own digital storefronts, it seems like the era of discs and cartridges are nearing an end, which is sad because I like to blow on the disc. I like to blow on the cartridge, you know? Um, does anybody remember that buffer thing? They, God, what was that called? Uh, the buffer that you'd buff your, your CD-ROMs with. I, I, used to, I used to hate it. I would get pre-owned games from GameStop and like I had a copy of Mega Man Legends 2 and it was all scuffed on the bottom because they used the game buffer thing on it. It worked fine, but when I went to resell it, and I, I did sell it years later because we needed the money in Mega Man Legends 2 with the case was fetching a pretty penny at the time. And I sold it along with uh, Tron Bond and Mega Man Legends 1. Uh, but uh, yeah, it, it really killed the resale value. It was like, yeah, the disc is all scuffed. It plays fine, but it looks really bad. Anyway. The Digital Entertainment and Retail Association is a UK-based trade organization that tracks physical and digital media sales. They estimated that 89.5% of games sold in 2022 were digital downloads. All right, only 10% of copies were sold as physical discs or cartridges. Digital sales make up nine out of every 10 games sold in the UK. So yeah, so when people are like, oh, uh, they're only counting the digital sales. They're not counting the physical sales yet or whatever the excuse is. It's like, do the physical sales really matter anymore? I don't even think it matters. It's like if the game's selling well digitally, the game is selling well. End of discussion. Since digital game retailers like Steam and Epic aren't exactly forthcoming with their sales figures, uh, the ERA cautions that the data is based on estimates. Still, the ERA has built itself a reputation for producing data trusted by the titans of the video game industry. Uh, when the data points to a larger trend of physical media steadily becoming more of a niche purchase for diehard fans and video gaming preservationists, publishers listen and adjust their sales plans accordingly. That's basically what's going on. You know, what's going on now is if people are buying physical copies, for the most part, they're buying these primo collector editions, you know. And sometimes like it doesn't even have a physical game in it. It's just like a freaking code or something. Uh, depending, you know, if it's a PC game, a lot of times it just has a code. If it's freaking uh, the Metal Gear Solid collection, the volume one for Switch, it had the ROMs on the card and that was it. And then you had to download the, the actual Metal Gear Solid uh, games. But it's interesting because the Escapist, RIP, I think they're gonna shut down here pretty soon, but they're talking about uh, J-pop and K-pop and how they are, you know, selling these like really primo versions of CDs and LPs and stuff. And there is a market for this. I mean, there definitely is, but there's a big difference between the person that's going to spend this kind of money for a physical release or this kind of money for a physical release and someone who's just going to download it on Amazon music or, you know, iTunes or whatever. And that's what we're talking about here. We're talking about the casuals who just want to play the game versus the diehards. And I think more and more, because a lot of the companies that sell digitally are outsourcing their the physical copies to companies like Limited Run Games. Again, you know, <laughs> I have I have opinions about Limited Run Games and, and what they've done, but they do let them handle the physical releases because there's no money to be made for them. Because you know, they, Limited Run Games, Super Rare Games, all these other you know game studios. I think Mega Cat Games is another one here in Pittsburgh. They actually. 
uh, has has rare releases, they know the audience. They have mailing lists of people that buy physical copies. But it's a tough sell. You're not going to drop something like this in Walmart. You're not going to have a freaking hundred dollar version of a game and drop it in Walmart and it's going to fly off the shelves when you can buy the digital copy for like 20 bucks, right? Plus space too. A lot of people don't have a lot of space, but you can fit a lot of games on SD card or on a hard drive, you know, so you can have more games and not have all the clutter. Me personally, I like looking at a shelf full of cases, of boxes. I like looking at the art, but they don't even have the instruction manuals in like they used to. Like games used to have these really cool instruction manuals. They have maps and they have all this really cool stuff. And now it's just like, nah, it's just the, it's just a cartridge in a box. There's no instruction manual or anything with it, you know, because because now the instruction manual is basically built into the game, right, uh, via tutorial, and which I, I hate. I hate that. I gotta be honest. I like learning how to play the game, especially if the game is a little more complicated. But I hate that the first like two or three hours of the game is the freaking instruction manual. Like, just throw me into it, and if I need to figure it out later, I will. But anyway, that's just me. I'm an old head. But there we go, guys. So apparently, only four percent of. Uh, Sony's sales were physical. What do you think about that? Do you like physical media? Do you like digital media? What are the advantages of both? Uh, what's your collection look like these days? Leave a comment, let us know. Please subscribe for more gaming news and gameplay videos. We'll talk later. Thanks for watching. If you like this content and want to see more, please subscribe and ring the bell for notifications. And check out more videos on the channel, including Let's Plays in art and animation videos here on Clownfish Gaming. Now he's just tasty, delicious, rotten flesh meat, which I can consume. Don't read into it too much. Just like our museum, the cafe, it's open to brute through it, eager to serve. I don't think this was in the show. No, run, 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 run. Oh, you got splatted. No. Oh, wait, oh, wait, oh she was begging and what? you kicked her in the face. I don't care. Hey guys, Squid King here, and today we're in a... Not girl boss, not girl boss at all. She is not a material girl. She is not. Ah. Oh, it's Christmas time here in your mom. Nobody wants to join your mom. What? Like I can't even cook kid cuisine right. I would last about two minutes with Gordon Ramsay. What? Where is he? He's hiding. He's hiding from you. He better. Oh my God, you got the ax. Walker, does this look like Steven Universe? Let me punch him. Well, I'm just here for the wax. Get in the dirt. Well, that was a combination of events I probably shouldn't have put together. Anyways, let's open this bottle too. Chica Pinata. Is that official? Oh, no. There's a bootleg. Hello. I'm sorry. Hey guys, it's Diamond Tool. Let's make a farm. Like and subscribe and buy my merch. I mean, while you're here, you guys should like really like and subscribe and buy our merch, all of which we have. <laughs> that is true. Can't run him carrying trash. You can get away with one F bomb per PG 13 movie. Oh, I wish I'd yeah. known that sooner. Yeah. All right, so we're going to wrap this F up. Yes. <laughs>